Amen. It's now. Yes, uh, I'd like to talk about the, the anointing makes a difference. Uh, I've been sharing about the anointing and there are some things to, uh, in our daily prayer meetings. And there are things I've discovered about the anointing. But first of all, what is the anointing? I've come to understand the, that anointing is the manifestation of God's presence. The manifestation of God's presence, the anointing. So God's presence, I've also learned that it also means his glory. So the presence of God, or God's presence, also means his glory. In Acts chapter number one, verses eight, it says, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. I've learned that that power is the anointing of God. You can't have the anointing unless you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So a relationship with the Holy Spirit will contribute a lot to your anointing. I've also come to learn that the glory of God is given as long as a person is faithful to God. But that glory shall produce power. It's the glory of God which produces the power. And that power is the anointing. So without the glory, there is no power. And no one can begin walking in uh, signs and wonders without the glory. So the power is the gift of God, the glory of God gives the power is the gift of the glory of God gives. So the glory I've learned because I used to question. There are people you see working in healing. People still receive deliverance. But when you hear what they are doing, some we've heard about them on their radios. They have done things which you feel, no, the glory is not with them, according to what they are doing. Mm -hmm. I've learned that the glory can depart and the power remains. How am I being understood? So, if you, if you get into the presence of God, you can be in the presence of God, and the glory of God comes upon you. The glory is very powerful. David is prayed and said, let your glory shine upon me. Moses prayed about the glory. So the glory is so important. If you walk right with God, the glory shall come upon your life. When the glory comes upon your life, you receive the power. The glory produces the power. So when the glory comes upon you, it brings an effect. That effect is the power. So that, that glory can depart and the power remains. Like so, so lost the glory, but he prophesied. So meaning someone can still pray for people to receive healing. Someone can prophesy, yet the glory departed. What will take me to heaven and you is not the power. It is the glory. 
if we, we, if we receive the glory and we keep the glory of God and we end in glory, we shall see God. We are sure of where we are going. Those ones Jesus will tell, I never knew you. Hmm? You look at that, you, you reach at the gate of heaven and the angel opens the book and he says, uh, Solomon, I never knew you. Yet here on earth, this worries me so much. You have led the people in prayer meetings. You have given them prophecies. This is what the Lord says. And they see it coming to pass. Mm. You give a word. They see, yeah, it's a your very said. This is what the Lord is going to do. All the people, the old age, men are going to die. And people see it coming to pass. But then you reach at the gate of heaven. The books are opened and your name is not there. You led the multitudes, but your name is not in the book because you concentrated on the power. Since what we need to concentrate on is to receive the glory and keep the glory of God. It is that glory which produces the power. And that power is the anointing. You can keep your anointing to prophesy. You can remain with your anointing. When you're sinning, you're living an ungodly life. But you pray for people and they get healed. That can happen. Pastor Robert one time he shared with us a story of a young man who's, who was in Seguku and the Lord was using him so much he could go to, was it Zambia? He had a relationship with the president of the country, I think it was Zambia. They could fly him out to Zambia to pray with the president and, and things were happening. But he was living a very funny life here. And of course, eventually he lost it. Mm. But when, when Pastor Robert was sharing with us a story, he said, this young man, I think he was teaching, I think he said he was teaching even Sunday school. Mm. But he was doing greater things, praying. Here in Uganda, few people knew him. But out there, in, I think it was Zambia, the president of Zambia. Yes. Hey, it was, yeah, mm -hmm. he was doing greater things. Why? How come? This young man at some point, he had experienced the glory of God. And that glory of God produced power. So because of his funny living, the glory departs and he remains with the power. So the power will still do those great things. People receive a healing. Even the, the coronavirus, COVID-19 will, patient will be healed. People with AIDS may be healed. But it's the glory which protects us from danger. So the, gro the, the, so the glory can depart and you remain with the anointing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you remain with the power. Hallelujah. So the glory of God is the person of God. So the glory and the presence are the same. I've also come to learn that God is anointing is backed out of pressure, out of adversity, out of seeking his face. Pressure and adversity pushes us to seek his face. People who don't pray, they will pray when they have problems. 
People will pray when they are broke, when they don't have money, they'll get MBs and they will connect to Zoom meeting on Friday evening. When people have money, they are going to go shopping at the time of the Zoom meeting. They will even bribe the policemen such that they walk under the curfew. So the greater the pressure, the greater the anointing. During the, the current, quarantine season, I read about many men of God, but all of them have a very interesting story, very tough stories, what they went through. I used to admire some men of God until I started reading some of their stories, their testimonies, what God has taken them through. And I realized mm -mm, it's not about touching someone's coat, carrying someone's coat I receive. Mm. Man of God, put your hand on me. Oh, I receive the anointing. I've come to understand that the anointing is birthed out of pressure, out of adversity. The situations we go through, the challenges we go through, give birth to an anointing. Some of the situations like what we have been going through, what the world was going through, it was giving birth to a fresh anointing. Isaiah chapter number 10, verses 24 to 27. He says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, all my people who dwell in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrian. He shall strike you with a rod and lift up his staff against you in the man of Egypt. For yet a very little while, and the indignation will cease, as will my anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts will stir up a scourge for him, like the slaughter of the Midian at the rock of Horeb. As his rod was on the sea, so will he lift it up in the man of Egypt. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will, will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Very interesting that God is aware of the attack of the Assyria. And he says, don't be afraid. The Assyrian will not take long. I, come, I get to understand that nothing happens in my life by accident. There are things which happen in our lives because of the doors we have opened, spiritual doors. Did you know that your mouth is a spiritual door? Your eyes are spiritual doors? Your hands are spiritual doors? What you see, if you keep your eyes on things which are not of God, evil spirits will come into your life so you have opened a door to the Assyrian. Now, because you have opened that door and your child of God is going to watch over you, is going to see you, you have opened that door, but you will say, okay, you have opened that door, deal with it. But I'm also going to help you that out of that situation that though you have opened, you are going to seek me. That do you open? Hmm? Take for instance, you're, you're a woman, you're a married woman and you're so quarrelsome. Every time your husband comes, hmm? 
you're opening a door to the attack of the enemy to attack your, your marriage. Before you know it, your husband is not coming back the following day home. Next day is not coming back. What is going to happen? God is watching over all that. Hmm? What does he do? What he does is very simple. He's going to watch over you and he'll speak to you. You go to the church, you'll come to church and the Lord, the Lord will say, don't fear, the Lord says I'm with you. But you open the door to the Assyrian. But still the Lord says, yeah, I'm with you. But then that situation is going to push you into prayer. You are going to pray. You're going to seek counsel from the pastor. Pastor, I need to see you. And out of that, through prayer, seeking the counsel from the servant of God, that is the pressure which is, which is also giving birth to the anointing. It is your personal mistake. You open, isn't God so graceful that even your personal mistake, hmm, he will allow it to happen because you open the door for yourself. Hmm? And he will not allow that situation to kill you. That situation will push you into seeking him. Because remember I said, people who don't pray will pray when they have problems. So you're going to pray. You're going to fast. Hmm? You're going to fast and fast and fast. As you're fasting, you're getting deeper in God. You want to do everything right with God. Hmm? You don't want to make any mistake. Now, that fasting, as you are fasting, fasting is what prepares us for a new anointing. So the discipline of fasting releases the anointing. You must understand that discipline of fasting releases the anointing. So when you have opened the door to the Assyrian in your life, there is an attack of the enemy, but it is your own making. Some, some people have become Assyrians of themselves. You are pushed to pray. You are pushed to seek God. In a fast, you have never fasted. So as you fast, that pressure which pushes you into fasting, it will give birth to the anointing. So problems draw us in prayer. Those who don't pray, will pray when they have problems. God wants us in the area where he can have our full attention. Sometimes we want to serve for him, but there is a yoke around our neck. Many people want to serve God, but there is a yoke around their neck. So the anointing you receive, the anointing, such that you're able to serve him freely. So one of the purposes of the anointing Anointing is for service. God cannot anoint you, my sister, to just look cute. God wants to anoint you for service. He wants to anoint you to serve him. And he anoints you to do something, to preach. Hmm? Anoints you to he can anoint you to run, the, to run businesses. The anointing is not for only preaching on the pulpit. So anointing is to us and the fuel to the car. Fuel enables the car to, to move. Fuel enables the car to perform. The fuel empowers the car to perform. So the anointing empowers us to perform. With the anointing, we are able to do greater 
exploits. Hallelujah. A lot of people are lazy, fearful, insecure, have never seen the anointing of God on their lives because they don't function. Not because they are bad people, they just don't function. If you don't function, you will never experience and enjoy the anointing. So it's time, it's season for us to step out, saints. It's time to step out. Uh, let me run to something very important that I've discovered. I've discovered there are three dimensions of the anointing. Three dimensions of the anointing. There is a beginner's anointing. I will call it a beginner's anointing or a sinner's anointing. There is a king's anointing and a dominion anointing. I, I will say briefly about each one of them according to our time. We don't have too much time. Sinner's anointing or the beginner's anointing is this kind of anointing David received among his brethren. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, we see David was anointed among his brethren. That first anointing, that beginner's anointing, is to put the giants down in your life. If in your family, Muli Benzi hmm, is the beginner's anointing which puts the giant of Benzi down. We move about the, each one of us, all of us who accepted Jesus as his personal savior, we received on our day of salvation, we received this beginner's anointing. The Holy Spirit came on us. That day we confessed to Jesus as our personal savior. And that first anointing we received was to put the giants down in our lives. So you cannot say now, sin has overpowered you. No, there is that beginner's anointing you received, which must enable you to put every, every giant down. So that beginner's anointing, you're anointed among the brethren, the brethren, I mean in the church, among the church members, you anointed, you came out, you accepted Jesus among the brethren. That's the anointing David received by Prophet Samuel. Prophet Samuel came and anointed him among his brethren. And that is the anointing. That anointing was not enough for David even to become the king of the tribe of Judah until he received the second anointing. That's why you see David was anointed three times. Why? Each dimension of the anointing had a purpose, had a role to play. The first one I've said was to put the giants down. So if sin is still defeating you, you cannot have an excuse. No. And you must understand, anointing. Hmm? If we had time, we would also look at what anointing can do and what anointing cannot do. What anointing can and what anointing cannot. Anointing cannot stop you from sinning, but it, it will empower you to overcome the temptation. Mm -hmm. So we have said, sinner's anointing or beginner's anointing is to, to put the giants down. The second one, which I call the king's anointing or the priesthood anointing, this is the second anointing David received in 2 Samuel chapter 2, verses 4. This anointing was for service. Like what he says in Exodus 30, 30. 
So does that, that you? We see Aaron says, and write for me, Aaron. Let me just read you there. Exodus 30, 30. Uh -huh. Okay, here I am. Exodus 30, 30, he says, and you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate to them mm -hmm, that they may minister to me as priests. This second anointing, which is the priesthood anointing, is for service. Mm -hmm. Second Samuel, the one uh, where David is anointed. Uh, five minutes, okay. Where David is anointed the second time. Second. Okay, second Samuel chapter two, verses four. Mm -hmm. four. Okay, here we are. Then the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David the king over the house of Judah, and they told David, saying, The men of Jabesh, Gilead, we are the ones who buried Saul. The first anointing could do not enable David even to become a king of the tribe of Judah. It was the second anointing, this second dimension of the anointing, which empowered him, which empowered him to become the king of Judah. What happened in the book of Acts, when the disciples were in the upper room, was this second dimension of the anointing. Gifts are bathed. Hmm? Gifts are bathed. Uh, miracles happen in the prayer meeting. That's still, that's still a second dimension. Hmm? Uh, we worship, the power of God comes down people healed, that is still the second dimension, which is the priesthood anointing. Under this anointing, whatever you say happens. If you said, if Pastor Robert was on the pulpit and you come to interrupt his service and he says, you die in seven days you will die. The priesthood anointing is not played with. You don't joke with it. It's frightening. It's frightening. You can be driving with a priesthood anointing. A border border man knocks you and insults you. And before you know it, he's knocked by a trailer. Even when you have not said a word, that is the priesthood anointing. Mm. This priesthood anointing, it's limited to service. It's intense. Mm -hmm. Now let me take you to the third one, which is dominion anointing. And there's a, someone says he can't hear. Dominion anointing. Dominion anointing is the third dimension of the anointing. David received to become the king over Israel. The first anointing was to put the giant down. The second anointing was the priesthood anointing, was just to be a king of only a tribe of Judah. Don't think that you, you, you an usher in the church, you need the ushers, you qualify to start a church. You make mistakes. Because you have prayed for someone with headache and is healed, you think now I can go. You must, we must understand. And I think I've been learning and I'm, I'm discovering that these are the problems with us as the Pentecostals. You pray for someone with headache, is healed, tomorrow you start a church. Today you, mm, so we have uh, many prodigal sons out of our Pentecostal churches. 
because you received the beginner's anointing and then you started tapping into the priesthood anointing, you feel you can. David could not become the king of Israel with the beginner's anointing and with the priesthood anointing until he received the dominion anointing. Dominion anointing is there to dominate. Once you receive that dominion anointing, some people we have read, you have read about uh, Smith Wigglesworth. His wife died. And when she died, he went and woke her up. He said, you have not said bye to me. The woman complained and said, I was happy.